Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a US Navy trained physician, and I've been improving my own brain health as well as the brain health of my clients through meditation and neurofeedback training for over the past 10 years. Today, we are seeing if cold water exposure can actually improve your brain health. To find out, I recorded my brain waves using the Muse headband during a cold plunge I did in my backyard. Now, before the cold plunge, I recorded a 47% Muse Calm meditation score and a 10.5 peak alpha score, which is associated with my overall brain health. During the plunge, my brain waves spiked all across the board, but especially in the beta and gamma range. And what happened after the plunge? My Muse meditation score was a solid 69%, and my peak alpha brain health metric shot up to 11 hertz, which is a new personal record for me. Does it just cause a temporary spike in brain performance metrics, or could it lead to long-term benefits for your brain? That's what we're going to unpack here in today's video. And if you found this data to be already interesting and informative, please hit the subscribe button to help support the channel. I really appreciate it. Now, cold plunges have been around for centuries, but in recent years, they have absolutely surged in an attempt to improve athletic recovery and reduce inflammation in the body. But new research suggests that cold exposure may do more than just help your body. It might actually improve your brain function by boosting your alertness and improving cognitive performance, and even increasing mental resilience. So let's take a look at what's actually happening on the cellular level in the body. First of all, cold exposure triggers several key biological responses. It rapidly constricts your blood vessels, and then after you get out, the blood vessels dilate, which all helps flush out metabolic waste and improve circulation. There's a bunch of evidence that it reduces pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6, which are linked to chronic inflammation and disease. It also increases interleukin-10, which is an anti-inflammatory molecule that helps regulate your immune function and prevent excessive inflammation. The cold exposure also stimulates your vagus nerve, which activates the rest and relax parasympathetic nervous system, allowing you to reduce stress and promote intense relaxation after you're done with the plunge. The plunge also activates brown fat metabolism, which burns calories and helps regulate inflammation at a systemic level. But what about the brain? Well, these same biological mechanisms don't just help the recovery of our bodies, they also have a huge effect on neurotransmitters, brainwaves, and overall mental performance. And you could really see that in the brainwave data that I collected during this experiment. First of all, oh my gosh, does it wake you up. The second that cold water hit me, it just absolutely scrambled my brains. During the exposure, it definitely helps to breathe. So there's a lot of breathing training online like the Wim Hof method. In fact, it seems like it's the one main thing that helps you get through the initial shock of cold exposure. The first thing that happens is your fight or flight response kicks in. It's hard not to tense up and you get this huge surge of the neurotransmitter epinephrine being released in your brain. Now studies have shown that your norepinephrine levels can go up 500% which leads to an immediate heightened alertness and focus. It can be really intense, but it's really worth it because the second thing that happens, which is the much more enjoyable part, is that there's also a big surge in dopamine, which is the feel-good molecule, and explains the mental clarity and the euphoria that people get, myself included, after a cold plunge. You just get this great boost in your motivation and you feel very resilient because it's exercising that neurocircuitry. Now to measure all this, I use the Muse headband, which is a wearable electroencephalography brainwave tracking device or EEG. I did a 10 minute meditation session before and after the cold plunge with the Muse app. And I also recorded my raw EEG brainwaves during the plunge with the Mind Monitor program. I made sure that the water was dumped on me so I wasn't moving around and contaminating the signal. After the plunge, my meditation score jumped up to 69% despite all the distractions going on, and my peak alpha hit 11 hertz, which is my highest level ever. The Muse meditation score of my meditation sessions is a proprietary measurement by the Muse headband to reflect how well I was able to relax and maintain my focus on the breath during a meditation session. Now with the anticipation of the cold plunge and filming outside with barking dogs and cars driving by, it was a challenge to get a good score. So a 47% calm score is about what I would expect in this type of situation. Now, when I finished the cold plunge, I felt this 
surge in awareness and focus that's really common after cold plunge. And then I sat down to do another Muse meditation session and found it so much easier to maintain my focus on my breath for extended periods of time and felt a lot more calm. As a result, I had a 69% calm score from that session, which was quite an improvement from the 47% I got a little earlier. In my opinion, that's quite a big improvement from one session to the next. But what totally blew me away about this experiment was the peak alpha measurement, because that's where things got really interesting. Now, peak alpha is the measurement of peak power within the alpha brainwave band, and the younger and healthier your brain is, the higher those levels tend to be. Now, before the plunge, I got a score of 10.5 hertz, which is actually really high for me compared to a lot of the measurements that I've made in the past two months. I've scored as low as nine hertz in the past, so things were already looking good. And in my experience, it's actually more difficult to increase the value of peak alpha if you're already starting out at a high level. So I was thinking that it probably wouldn't increase from the cold plunge. Imagine my shock and amazement and excitement when I found that it actually shot up to 11 hertz, which is one of the highest levels I've ever gotten. And the brainwaves that I recorded on Mind Monitor during the cold plunge were revealing as well. You can see for the first five minutes, I was sitting in the tub without any water, getting a baseline reading, just calmly focusing on my breath. And then right at the five minute mark, my lovely assistants dumped the ice cold water on me and into the cold plunge. I wanna zero in on three main brain waves for this experiment. The blue line is the alpha waves, which are about eight to 12 Hertz. They tend to go up when you are calm and focused. The green line is beta waves, which are 13 to 30 hertz, and they're most commonly associated with active thinking and problem solving. And the orange line are the fastest frequency, which are gamma waves at over 30 hertz, and are often linked to peak mental performance and heightened awareness. You can see a big spike in all brain waves right when the ice water hits me. That's likely due to my entire body reacting with full brain activation, but also muscle contractions and breathing as I try to handle the shock. From a data standpoint, the most interesting part is what happens after I calm down and acclimate, and you can see that those brain waves stay at sustained levels for the rest of the cold plunge. Once I get my breathing under control, you can see that true shift in brainwave activity. There's a slight increase in alpha, suggesting some increased focus. The slower brainwaves, delta and theta, that are most commonly associated with sleep and relaxation, they didn't change much. But by far the largest increases were within the beta and gamma range, showing this heightened awareness that I achieved and are likely associated with peak mental performance. So there was this immediate increase in my high performance brain waves, but there was also a sustained effect in the quality of my meditation and my brain health afterwards. And with cold plunge, you just feel so good. You can see me laughing with euphoria towards the end of the experiment. You can tell I was in a really good mood and I can tell you that that mood lasted throughout the whole evening. Okay. <laughs> that was intense. The red color was so slow. <laughs> so along with the physical body benefits of cold plunge, we're seeing clear evidence that it also can improve your brain function. I think cold plunge boosts your focus helps with your mood, increases your mental resilience, and it also improves cognitive recovery based on this data. If you've never done cold plunge before, be careful if you have any cardiovascular or circulation issues. Make sure you work your way up to freezing water. Maybe do colder and colder temperatures as you get comfortable with it. But if you're generally healthy and you want to incorporate this into your brain health routine, I think it's a fantastic tool. I plan on using it even more after seeing these results which are some of the biggest improvements in my brain health metrics that I've ever seen. Cold plunge is something that I have and will continue to incorporate into my use of journaling, meditation, neurofeedback training, and vitamin supplementation for my overall brain health. Now, if you wanna see what supplements I've been taking for my brain health, take a look at this video here and I'll see you on the other side.